Hello, welcome to day 34 of the Climb to 1800. Let's just jump right into it. And I am in the wrong layout. Let me go to the video recording tab. And I'm against Mr. Beast. No way. I'm kidding. Obviously, I know that this is not Mr. Beast. But we are up against a 1551. So this is a high rated opponent. And goes for the exchange, Karo Khan. Um, main line is not that, but that's fine too. Um, and I have not studied the main or the exchange Karo Khan at all. I guess um, the like chess.com sideline is telling me that this is the old Benoni defense, whatever that is, but I don't know what that is, so I'm just going to develop normally. And I think that all this is fine. Nothing too crazy has happened just yet. We are on the fourth move of the game after all. I suppose fifth if you count my opponent's next move. Now my wish is for them to let me pin their bishop. Um, my kind of philosophy is that I hold off. Um, okay, that's fine. My kind of my philosophy is to hold off the moving out the bishop until I absolutely have to. Um, and I could already play a six and then kind of get a trade or something like that. I could also bring out my bishop to f5. That looks fine. I could also bring out my knight to f6. What I'm thinking is f6, he pins it. Then um, I'm kind of forced to play e6 so as not to mess up my pawn structure. And then my bishop is blocked in, but I can probably activate it elsewhere. So everything here is probably still fine. I'm, I'm just going to play knight f6 just because it doesn't look bad at all. And then if he pins it, I'm probably just going to play e6. And I'll find some other way to activate my bishop. I'm really not too afraid of it. Maybe I should have. Maybe bishop f5 was actually a bit more accurate there. So kind of wishing I would have thought for just a moment longer. But you live and you learn. And oh, my elo is not correct. I'm not um, 1471 anymore. I'm 1479, which is exciting. Or if we win three games in a row... Theoretically, we're like three games off. Or if we win this game, that's like two games off. Okay, so opponent really doesn't want me to be able to pin. Um, I think I'm okay with that. I can just go bishop f5. If he really wants to go g4, I'm not going to stop him. I don't think there's anything that, that threatens too much. Um, I have a very itchy nose today. I'm not completely sure why. Um, but yeah, I really want to get my bishop out before I... Do anything crazy so i'm just gonna play bishop f5 let me just double check if this blunders anything and if it does i'm not seeing it so i'm just gonna play it expecting a move like this um i might also want to play h6 in the future just to give my bishop an escape square in case he ever plays like knight f4 or sorry knight f3 to h4 or something crazy in fact, if he doesn't pin my bishop right now, I think I'm just going to play h6 next move. Before even playing e6 even, maybe. I'm not, I'm not totally sure. I'm going to take my pedal, my foot off the brake a little bit and... Okay, I know I, I just said I probably wasn't going to um, play that move, but... I feel like playing h6 here is very good. Because it gives me an escape square if g4, it gives me an escape square if knight h4, because it stops him from pinning with bishop g5. I mean, h6 just looks really solid right now. Like, I mean, I think I could obviously also play e6, but why give him the chance to do that and then just kind of mess up my pawn structure? So I'm just going to play it. it. I really doubt that that can be too wrong. Because that's just useful in pretty much all lines. And then maybe I play a6 too and I get a little bit of a hedgehog structure. Okay, so he wants to put a bit more pressure on me. I don't think that's a big danger though. Obviously, the threat is this, but I have a million ways to defend that. I can play queen c7 or rook c7. Which one do I like better? Which one do I like better? Obviously, I recover with the pawn first. I'm going to make sure that there is no knight sack there. Um, and then a queen entrance. Um, I like rook here a bit more because I I want my rook on the open file anyway, so I'm just going to play it. And next move, I'm just going to kick out the bishop because that looks like it might cause a bit... Or, or this pin looks like it might cause me a bit of... Um, strife 
some would say. And if this is really Mr. Beast, oh my gosh, if I win this game, um, then I might be getting a big payday. I don't know. Just kidding. Um, but yeah, I am appreciating that opponent is thinking because even if opponent because if my opponent thinks and they play better moves, which means that they're more more likely to win, less likely to blunder. But it also means that I get higher quality games where I learn more. So I like that more than just elo boosting, basically, which has resulted from a few of my opponents making pretty obvious mistakes in recent games. And I will always be on the eye for tactics in which I can take this, maybe queen b6 nonsense in the future. So that I can keep eyes here, but he's, I mean, I feel like he might just take eventually. That solves a lot of his issues. Yeah, now that I look at it, I am glad that I played e6. Um, however, in, in, in a lot of my Karo Khan games, the opponent's knight gets to e5, and it's pretty difficult to dislodge. So I'm going to ask my coach how I can stop that from, from happening so often. I do have a coach. A very good one, too. Just castles. Okay, that's fair. I feel like he's going to try, try to put pressure there. I want to... Well, there's actually no rush to kick this bishop, to be fully honest. I don't actually have to do that. Queen b6 is probably met pretty easily by a move like bishop e3 because he can't d develop with a pin anyway. e6, I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think there's absolutely no nothing wrong with this either. I have a feeling that the, ne the next few moves are going to be developmental. But why give rise to tactics when I can just play solidly? There's nothing wrong with just playing e6 in this position. And for the first time in a while, I have more time than my opponent. Not by very much, but... A slight amount. And, I don't know, position looks really solid. My bishop is not trapped. I basically just have like a better French, but there's no pawn on e5, there's a knight instead. And yeah, next move I'm pretty much just gonna play a6, no matter what he does, unless he plays some forcing move. But, yeah, that's my thought process right now, that's my analysis. Let's see what opponent does, because if they lose to me, they will be losing about 10 points, because I'm gaining 10 points if I beat this person. So if I beat this person, I, I would be only 11 points away from 1,500, which is a massive milestone. But let's not get our hopes up too, too early, because, you know, <sighs> opponent has obviously been playing chess for a while. Akira Kun. 2012. I hope that that doesn't mean that they were born in 2012 because that means that I am playing a 12 year old Which if I lose would be a bit disheartening, but there are some insane 12 year olds out there Insanely good at chess. He does play the check. Obviously my move is to recapture My next move is probably c5 just gonna be cognizant of not giving his knight too strong of an outpost Um, yeah. This knight's a bit annoying, but I don't think it's actually that big of a threat. Okay, where does he want to go? He probably wants to go there to th threaten my bishop, but I can really just slide back. So I don't think that's that big of an issue. Is there anywhere else he could go? He could go there, but... Again, I don't think that's that big of a threat either. In fact, now I just play c5 and I get my bishop into the game, and I think I'm doing totally fine. Because I, I, I need to castle, and I need to move my dark square, my dark square bishop... I really have nowhere else to put it. I assume, now that I think about it, that his reason for moving his knight was not to move his knight at all, but instead to move his pawn. Um, so that c5 can be met with c3. Which I suppose is a pretty nice move. It looks actually pretty good, now that I think about it, to, for my opponent at least. Um, let's see, c5, c3. Then, obviously, if I... Oh, no, he can also take with the knight, but that doesn't look as good because that makes his knight on e5 a bit dislodged. So let's slow down a minute and think about what the best course of action here is. Can I prevent him from playing with c3? I don't think so. Queen b6 looks a bit enticing because then c3, I play here. He probably won't capture. It'll probably 
play bishop e3 or something, then... Yeah, then takes. He'll probably take with tempo, so I guess not. But here, c3. Then, even if I do capture... Captures... Like, his pawn there is always going to be a target. I think I'm still fine, so I'm just going to play it. I'm expecting c3, but I could be surprised by something else. I think taking here would be a bit inaccurate. Yeah, c3 is played. I don't want to play queen b6 because that just basically asks him to play bishop there. Oh no, because then I win a pawn. Wait, let me calculate queen b6 because now that I saw that the pawn is hanging if he plays queen um, bishop b3, that's actually a bit enticing. So here, obviously if he, if he captures, I just recapture here. Um... Also, I gotta keep my eye open for some bishop sacks in the near future. Not right now, obviously, but in the near future. Maybe I jump in with my knight pretty soon. Um, obviously, I don't want to take here just yet, because that would... Although, that being said, takes, takes, queen, queen b6, and it looks like I have a really strong file I can develop pretty naturally. So I don't think taking here would be a big mistake, to be honest. Maybe it's even the best move. I also like queen b6, though, because then I can take, take. Then I, then I don't even recapture, though, so I don't even really see the point. Um, hmm. I have a lot of questions right now. No, I think taking here might just be the most accurate move. Because then takes with the pawn. can play queen b6. And he can defend it, but I mean, this pawn is going to be a liability in the end game. So I'm just going to take. I think that taking there is the right move. If he takes with the knight, I'll have some other considerations to make, but I don't think taking with the knight is correct. I suppose you can also take with the queen. Taking with the queen might be the most annoying. Because then he's attacking my a my a7 pawn. But now that I look at it more concretely, I have the pretty strong bishop c5 there. Oh, he gives a check first. Well, that's very annoying. Oh, that might be game losing, actually. Yeah, that might be game losing. Hmm. I completely missed that. Because both of these squares are kept in check by the knight. Um, so my only real move is to move my king up. Oh wait, that's not true. I can play my knight here. Yeah, no, I th on second thought I'm fine. Because I can play my knight here. If he takes there, I win his knight, so that's not going to happen. I play here, he takes here. I just gonna, I'm just going to trade. Here, takes, takes... Queen takes, king takes, but at that point it's an endgame anyway, so. On second thought, I'm fine. I'm just not better. Yeah. That was worrying for a second, but. As always in chess, you've got to look concretely. No, just. Oh, that looks scary. I'm <laughs> not, not at. Um, the higher, I'm not, I'm obviously I'm not at a high level yet, but at the higher levels, um, that's going to be important. Not fearing ghosts. Um, I'm maybe he goes takes c3 here, but in that case, I'm I take here takes. Then I have the pretty strong. Oh no, I can't do that. What am I talking about? Because my knight's pinned. Um. Yeah, I'm going to want to get out of this pin as quickly as possible. I might even come down to, to pushing with f6. I'm not totally sure. I, yeah, I, th I think I'm still in a bit of trouble unless he just takes here. And then I think I'm fine. Or if he takes this pawn, I think I'm fine too. Because then I just liquidate. And then I can castle. So probably not lost as I originally thought. But definitely a bit annoying. Hmm. Yeah. I'm just trying to calculate what I do after he just takes on c3. Okay. He just... Wow, that jump scared me. Okay, obviously my only move is to capture there. 
Now he's probably going to take there instead of... Nope, I lied. Okay. And, okay. Now we're just fine. So I did over overreact. I don't think I'm much worse, if worse at all. Um, obviously, I don't want to give up this bishop for the pawn structure or and help his um, pawn structure. Where do I want to go with it? Well, I can go here. That threatens his rook, but we're not we're not in the business of making one move threats. So what concretely can I do? This sack obviously doesn't work. If I go here, he can just move here. Then I don't have anything. And then I'm probably gonna have to go back anyway. Do I want to go back to g5 or g7 or h7? It's a good question. I think either are probably fine. I like the look of h7 a little bit less because it gives me a little bit less flexibility. But at the same time, if he starts pushing g5, I'll probably wish that it was on h7. Where can it be attacked most easily? Um, I guess it could be attacked easier on g on g6. You know, I think that bishop h7 might be the more professional move. Yeah, and then I don't really have any ideas of going h5 anyway, because that just basically invites g4. So I'm just going to go with bishop h7. Next move is going to be a development, um, a development of the dark sword bishop. And by the way, my light square bishop is completely uncontested, cutting across the board like a knife, which is always nice. Probably going to develop the dark sword bishop to e7 or something, and my rooks will be connected, which is... Always something that you want to see. I think that my opponent, when he had me in the pin, his more testing option would have probably been to capture the pawn on d4 with his pawn, creating an IQP structure or something. Um, so what does opponent want? Op opponent probably wants this, double attacking my pawn. But after that, I just push, and then he doesn't really have anywhere to go. He can go here, but I mean, that just gives me a reason to, to move, develop. I can also literally just play this. I and I think that I will just play bishop c4 cuz he has no checks with his knight. And then if he goes like this, obviously I ruin his pawn structure. He can take a pawn for that. I don't really mind. Um Yeah, I'm just going to go bishop c4. I mean, triple checking I'm not blundering anything. I really don't think I am. So now we're pretty developed, and this game looks like it's going to come down to who can play the best endgame. Now, thanks, thanks to some great comments on my on some of my recent videos, I did end up getting the, um, what's the name of it? The Silman Endgame course on Chessable. Um, I'm not sure, it's Silman or Stillman or something like that, but the point is that my endgame should be getting a little bit better in the near future. <laughs> I'm also threatening, by the way, to push e5 and then damage his pawn structure. And I actually like that my king is in the middle because it just means that I have a more active king. So I would actually prefer the black position in, in this. Wow, that's weird. In fact, that's weird to the point that it doesn't look right. Because I take, then he has just a worse endgame. His knight doesn't really have anywhere to go after I go king e7. So yeah, I'm just going to do that. I'm not going to think too much. That was weird. But, you know. Um, let me say, obviously this pawn is under attack now. And in the spirit of not giving him any checks, I might just want to go king e7. I mean, obviously I could push this and then try to plan to barricade down the center. But he has a nice bind on the d4 square. Um, I'm actually getting a little bit nervous. I don't usually get nervous during chess games anymore, but it seems like I am right now. Yeah, I'm just going to play king e7, keep it simple. And looks like it's pretty even, except he is, his pawns are much easier to attack. Um, I'm going to try to be looking for some bishop forks in the near future, if they ever come available to me, but... We'll see if that ever actually happens. I doubt it. <laughs> um, 
Okay, he centralizes his knight. That makes sense. This is not obviously a threat. I don't think that his knight's actually that good there. It probably looks good, but it can always be pushed out pretty simply. Now I can probably... No, I don't want to play that because obviously that gives him his knight fork that he wanted. <laughs> um, I think e5 might be the move here. E I, I think it might be e5. Where does he go? Maybe there, but then I just push. And he doesn't really have anywhere else. Here, no, no matter where he goes, I kind of I kind of just play um, f6 next. And what I'm doing is I'm locking down the dark squares, and I have a light squared bishop. So I think I have pretty good control there. So here, let's just make sure he has no tricky forks. If, if he goes here, I push my pawn, and then he kind of just has to either go here and look kind of dumb, or... Um, drop all the way back over here and look bad so that's not an option he can come in with a check which is a little bit annoying but i think i just move up oh no because here check if i move up he just takes this pawn um so here check i don't, re I don't really want to capture so i am glad that i looked at this a little bit closer Because hmm. I also don't want to drop my king back to f7. That looks bad. So maybe I want to play f3 first and then prepare to push e5. So, I mean, I mean f6, obviously, not f3. So then f6, e5 might, might be my plan. I don't think opponent really has any plans. If he pushes either of these pawns, I just take it. Um, yeah, I'm going to play f6 in the spirit of playing e5. Also just eliminating this weak square as a consideration, although I am creating a new weak square, so that's always something to keep in mind. Okay, he did that. I'm just going to go along with my plan. And yeah, looks like he's weakening this pawn a little bit. Maybe I'll go rook b8, rook c8. Try to take advantage of all of it. He's probably calculating this line, but I already looked at it. I don't think that it's that good for him. He could not go back there. Oh, going actually, kind of no, no, no matter where he goes back, he has a few different problems to deal with. The main one being this bishop. So but let's see where he chooses, because what I do next fully depends on where my opponent goes right now. So we're going to try to squeeze out the advantage. And I'm actually really liking this position. It's very solid, for now at least. <laughs> and yeah, um, just... Keep in mind that our main strategy right now is to put all of our pieces, uh, all of our pawns on dark squares. And it's also 12, 14 where I live, so a bit tired, but that's not an excuse. My opponent is taking a think, and it's not an easy decision. If I'm him, I'm probably dropping back to f3, um, but that doesn't look like the most natural move, so maybe not. I mean, obviously can't go there. I take with the bishop. Going here basically walks into um, a move like rook b8. So I think that his only two moves are probably here or here. I guess he could give me this check, but that doesn't really achieve anything. Okay. And by the way, right, right after I said that, I realized it does. Because after he gives this check, I can't go here to due to this fork. So after this check, I'm probably gonna ha I, I would probably have had to take because I don't want to hang the g7 pawn. But that doesn't happen. Instead, he goes there, which I don't think is accurate. Um, so after I push a6, where can he go? He can't go there. Can't go there. Can't go there. He can go there. That doesn't look very good for him. And he can go there. But after he goes there... I trap his knight, so, and he has no forks, so, I think that's the plan. 
he's kind of forced back to a very passive square. So my bishop is much better than his knight right now, which I need to try to preserve in terms of inequalities. It looks like this is going to be just a pressure cooker who can last the longest. Oh, yeah, okay, so he finds the only move. The obvious move right now is is something like this. Um, I don't want to play a5 first because that gives him the square back for his knight. Yeah. Um... Oh wait, I just realized he has a hard time defending all of his pawns because this square is defended by my bishop. And my bishop's far away, you know, maybe he could miss that. There's a chance. There's always that joke about the bishops being on the other side of the board or, or like coming out of nowhere or something. But he can also defend with rook um, f2, which looks very reasonable. Instead he pushes. Hmm. Now the obvious drawback of that is that it weakens this pawn. Another interesting idea is I could try to dominate his his knight by going here and trying to just solidify my, my bishop in the center of the board. That looks enticing too. Coming with tempo and then... He really has a hard time dislodging that bishop, I think. But I don't think that's the strongest idea, so I'm not going to go for it. I don't want to push a5 because he can just move his knight back over there, or he can just push. I think he's fine. So why not move my other rook to the open, open file, or the semi-open file, I suppose. Now he does have a nice square for his rook. And, yeah, this game is looking to be a bit dry, but what can he do? Um, he's doing a nice job keeping my bishop a little bit out of the game in terms of where his pieces are. Um, I'm, I, I mean, I might just want to double stack here, in all honesty. Yeah, I only have a few minutes. I don't think double stacking... Double st yeah, double stacking is wrong, so I'm not going to do it. Keep in mind, he can't double stack because, obviously, um, my bishop defends that that idea. So I guess my bishop is in the game, just not in the way that's most expected. Now, he can always drop his knight back, but that will pretty much always be met with a bishop capture. So it looks like we're getting some good initiative right now. But, you know... Definitely far from over. Especially with his kind of pawn mass hurling towards me. Hopefully we're, we're going to chip down on that by one pretty soon, though. I'm thankful that my pawn on a6 is stopping him from going, okay, well, obviously he doesn't want to keep allowing me to do that. Um, hmm. Now, I didn't really look at that move, but I guess it's pretty reasonable. Because if I take, I think he takes with his knight, but I don't think that's actually that good. Because that gives me this square, then I can kind of go over here or over here. Yeah, I don't think that's actually that strong. I was going to take it. I'm going to call his bluff. I don't think it's that strong to have his knight there. I mean, obviously that was the move. So pretty soon I'm probably going to sack my bishop for his knight. Or not sack it, but <laughs> trade it. And do I want to move... I mean, obviously I have to move my rook, but where do I want to move it to? Um, I'm just going to make sure that I'm not giving him any forks. I can move it up here. That looks the most enticing, but that does block my idea of the bishop. So I guess not. Um, right here, he's probably going to tr start pushing this pawn, which is actually pretty scary. 
So maybe a move like this is actually better. Yeah, I, I want to be able to stop his pawn mobility. The only problem is he's going to get this fork if I do something like that too soon. So I think I'm going to go rook c6. And then I'm going to go bishop over here. Now he could stop my bishop from going there, but not without doing a little bit of dancing around. I think... Rook d1 is probably his strongest move. But after rook d1, I can get a little bit sneaky, go rook a8 with ideas of forking the pawn and his rook, and then taking. Oops, and then taking. So, there are a lot of ideas in this position. It's very interesting. Brings his king in instead. I think that that allows exactly what I wanted to happen to happen. <sighs> Let me just double check though. One thing slightly worrying is here, here, right? Then here, here. No, then here and he takes my pawn, but I think I'm fine. And let me calculate this again. So here, here, right? Then takes, takes with the pawn. No, then I'm fine. Then takes, he can take here, but I'm coming in with, with check. I'm coming in with a bunch of devious stuff. I think the time has come. And there is a chance he doesn't even play this move. But I'm liking the, my outlook on this endgame. His knight did prove to be a little bit more annoying than I had originally thought. And time is definitely a consideration, because I only have just under two minutes. And by the way, he can definitely just move his knight, too. That might be a little bit more testing. But then I can probably get in, take, take, take. I don't know. I have, I have a lot of ideas. Hmm. Yeah, I do like that my, all my pawns are connected and his are not. So his pawns are a little bit easy to pick off. Or I, you wouldn't think so with me playing this way, but I believe they are. Okay, now takes, takes, takes. Probably he's going to go check. I can go here. Then he might go check again, but then I go up, check, and then I come out and I defend all my pawns. Um, do I like that? Here takes, takes, check. I go down. Yeah, I'm fine with that. And I'm not afraid of him doubling up his rooks. I don't think that that's a real threat. Maybe I should be afraid of it. I don't know. But I'm not. Because now I'm just a pawn up and I'm threatening another one. He checks me again. I'm just going to go up. Okay, so he does choose to double. But again, I don't think that's a real threat. Because then... Um, instead, actually, I'm going to double on this. And then I think I'm totally fine. Yeah, because my biggest issue was that my pawns... Was that my rooks weren't connected. But now they are. Okay, so he wants this pawn. But I don't have to give it to him. Um, how do I want to not give it to him, though? Hmm. Or maybe I can just give it to him. Here takes. Then I'm still off the pawn. Then check, probably over here. 
But why make things complicated? When I can just go, no, I can't go there, but I can go there. And then probably takes, takes, and then I'm just up a pawn in the end game, so yeah. And he can go check, but then I, but then I just, oh, yeah, that's a bit annoying. But no, we're still just trading. I'm just, I'm just going to be up a solid pawn, I think. Okay, so he wants this. Yeah, that actually is annoying. Wow, I didn't see that. Okay, yeah, this might be worse than I thought. I don't think so, though. Here, wait, check. Oh, wait, maybe he's even just checkmating. I don't think so, though. Let me think about this for a minute. Obviously, I can't block. I mean, he can kind of just give perpetuals, I suppose. Hmm. I'm going to offer a draw. He declined it. I guess that makes sense. Um... Let's see, I'm going to be running low on time pretty soon, but... Hmm. Okay, plays the expected move. Now I could be a little bit fancy. Well, first I just throw in this check for some extra time. I throw in this check for some extra time. If he goes down there, that's bad news for him. Wait a minute. <laughs> um, well, that's actually almost checkmate. Not quite, because he has an escape square. But check. 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 <laughs> Check. Hmm. Yeah, this is definitely not lost anymore. Um, now I could give a check, but then he can just kind of give me a perpetual a bunch of times. So I'm just going to try to find a way to not let him do that. Yeah, this actually is probably just a draw. Wait, let me just think about this. Check. No, I'm just going to give him another check. Yeah, this is probably a draw, even though I'm up a pawn. Which is kind of annoying. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I can make this a perpetual if I wanted to. Wait a minute, that can't be right. Now I take here with check. Okay. Okay, now if I can just get out of his perpetual checks, then I think I win. Um, how do I do that though? Check takes, doesn't work. And I probably wanna not go there because that'll probably get me checkmated. But I might just wanna go here. Hmm. If I can get one pair of these rooks off, I think I just win. 
The reason I did that, by the way, was so that you didn't have this check to win my pawn. Hmm. He might be regretting the fact that he didn't take the draw, but I think it's probably still a draw. That's bold. He wants to checkmate me. Um, but he doesn't get to. I can just go like this. All right, since I'm so low on time, I might offer another draw, but not yet. All right, now I'm just going to run over here. Okay, now I have 27 seconds. Now I actually can just go like this. And now I probably wouldn't even want to give a draw, because now I can go like that. Now I think I'm winning. If he takes my rook, then I'm definitely winning. Okay. Instead he does that. I really just have one move here, don't I? I mean, I just have the one move. Hmm. All right. I think I might I might be losing or I might be winning. Okay, he offered a draw. I'll accept it because I don't think I'm winning here. Yeah, like I said, I don't th I I don't think I was winning. Um, so I, I, I know you guys, oh, I, I guess I was winning a little bit. Oh, I, maybe I shouldn't have taken that draw. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I, I, know, I know you hate it when I do, especially when I'm up two pawns. But I do have good reasoning for why I did that. My reasoning for why I did that, and I mean, obviously I didn't realize it was plus 0.8. But my, but my reasoning for that was that he could just take, take, take. And then I well, what I saw was... Um, that he was t threatening this, but what I didn't realize was that I could just take there. So, really dumb of me to take that draw, but. Um, yeah, I mean, his, his best defense was rook a7 here. And then, I mean, what do I even, I just didn't see path forward to be honest. Can I take here or no? No, sorry, no, that's made in one. Forgot I said that. Um, I guess I can go there. I, can, I don't know. I mean, like, it's winning for me, but it's not, like, winning by a lot. Okay, you know what? You guys might flame me in the comments for taking that draw, but from my point of view, like, I thought it was an equal end game, and I don't think that it was... Yeah, that's where I'll leave it. But it looks like I was winning by a ton, and then I blundered it away. So we'll see where that happened. Okay, let's go. All this is fine. All this is fine. Bishop f4 is not the best. It's probably e6, right? No, that's not what I meant. I meant this. Okay. Just blocking the pan is the best, but... Yeah, all this is fine. I do find the best move with e6. Takes, takes. C5 is not the best move. That's weird. It's usually C5 is the best move. Wow, I've never, I rarely see bishop d6 being the recommended computer move, but okay, taking here was a mistake. I guess I should have still gone, yeah. I should have still gone bishop d6. I guess I underestimated this move a little bit. Um, is, is bishop e7 okay too? No, it looks like bishop e6 is like much better. Um, but anyway, I made this mistake. Yeah, like I was saying, this is a miss. I think that c3 is the best way to capitalize on this. I was wrong. The best way to capitalize on this, and the only way is to take with knight d4. Oh, that makes sense. Because he keeps the pin. He keeps absolutely everything. And I have a bit of a hard time fighting my, my, my way back through this. 
Um, but anyway, he kind of gives away his advantage with this. And yeah, like I analyzed, my king being the center was actually good for me. Then takes, I go back to h7, was, wait, was the best move just, okay, the best move was g6, but it looks like there's a, like, barely a difference at all, Point zero three, And all this is fine. Yeah, I'm just winning here. Yeah, I'm just winning here. Um, what's the best move here? Don't fully understand that, but okay. Not a huge difference between what I played and, and rook c7, I guess, is to double up is the point. Okay, yeah, a6 is best. Then, yeah, this is winning for me by like 1.8. Then rook b8, this is all correct, all correct. Rook c7 idea to double up wasn't an accuracy. Instead, no clue why h5. I guess it's to stop g4 or something, but I would never have played g8 or h5 in my game. So I have no idea why that's best. Okay, what should I play here? Oh, so then I guess instead of that, I should have played this here, right? Yeah, okay, rook c4 was best by quite a bit. What I was worried about, I think, was um, the fact that pushing and I wasn't able to be there to stop it, but as I look at it, I wasn't there to stop it at any way because if I would have went rook a6, he had it. Um... Why did I think that was a fork? That isn't a fork even at all. I forgot I said that. Um, rook c7 is, or knight c7 is not a fork. Um, so forget I said that, but whoa, I thought that was a great move, huh? Okay, so trading this for the pawn was not the best because it allowed him to come in onto the back rank. So I, yeah, so I blundered there. I had to push up a little bit, and now it's just even if I pushed up. It's even, but I went four, so it's plus two, but e4 isn't good. I forgot that this square was gone. My idea was if he went here, it was checkmate, but he can just escape. I missed that. Instead of that, I should have yeah, pushed d4 just to try to make a passer. Oh, he probably should have ran forward. Oh, I missed running forward. And yeah, it looks like he's winning all my pawns there, but now it's negative five. And I missed an opportunity to capture a free pawn. What? Yeah, that's a blunder. That's what I thought. But so this is the idea. But doesn't he just check me forever? Oh, I guess I get out of the checks and I'm up two pawns. Oops, not there because rook a seven and then. I have to keep on giving me checks. Okay, wait. So then there, I, oh, there I had to give mate. Okay, I missed mate, but. Okay, so my big miss, it would, it, it would appear, was right here, getting this check again. I had to take here and not be afraid of perpetuals that didn't exist. Um, because Oh, because I'm threatening mate. That's why. So if he goes like rooks here or something, then I just check what happens if I... Okay, so I had to find a way to keep on threatening mate of one so that he didn't have these perpetuals. So I suppose that makes sense. And then eventually even one of him sack his rook. Okay, but to be honest, I'm not too mad at myself for missing that because that is a pretty fancy idea, I think. And he misses an opportunity to fork. What's the fork? Oh, to fork the pawns. Yeah, I missed that too. Um... And I was, and I did draw here. It's plus. It is minus one point four, but I'm not too mad about that because opponent did have higher accuracy than me, and I think I definitely could have lost this end game. So I'm trying to play with less fear, but I just feel like there's so many ways for me to mess up to mess this up that I'm actually not mad that I didn't play this out. So sorry for all of that for a draw. I know that you guys don't like draws. But sometimes that's how the cookie crumbled, I suppose. So I will see you tomorrow. And tomorrow I will go for the win. Have a great night. Adios.